Right, welcome back. Bank holiday weekend, May bank holiday weekend, and we're about to start letting some of our cattle out. This weekend, we're going to concentrate on getting us a few cattle out, I know, and make life a wee bit easier for ourselves. Now, she needs just after dropping over the two girls. They're going to give me a hand because no school today, it's Saturday. Oh, I'm going to make use of them when they're here. But the first thing I want to do is empty out these drinkers. They're quite green and quite dirty, um, so a oh, clean out of them would be definitely no harm. Hope my wife isn't watching this one because. She might recognise this brush. Well, that's the drinker emptied out. You can see all the old crap, the stuff that comes out of it on both sides. Just pure old leaves, but also nice fresh water filling there now. Uh, our pressure water isn't brilliant here. It's got better in the last few years. But I need to upgrade the pipe and go into the hoes the meter. It's in a long, long time. That's the only way of putting it. Some of it's in when we bought this farm back in 85. And it definitely needs to be changed. And that will greatly increase the pressure because it's a long way from the meter here. And it's all uphill. So, Although I am looking at it there now and that pressure there because we have a drinker down there fiddling as well. It's an awful lot better than it was years ago. So that's that job done. Let's get these heifers out. Next thing to do is turn on our electric fence for the first time of the year. Uh, don't tell me I'm missing a joiner. Bloody am. I hope there's one over there. But there are much stuff you bring with you. There's always the important stuff you forget. I'm going to tiddle over here through the heifers. I have a radio here I leave on. I see exactly what I'm looking for now. So these are the big three pin plug and this lad here. I don't use the radio anymore. So, we stick this by another one. There we go. That's horse singing now. I don't know if you can hear it. Right. talking to the girls here. Sophia touched the electric fence and didn't get a shock from it. And I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. She might not have just touched it for long enough. She didn't want to touch it a second time. But we're going to just test it and make sure it is working. It should be working. I can't see any reason why it won't. That's them out. You've seen how excited they were. They'd actually bust through fences and all. That's why the girls stood on the far side of these trees where the paddock and um, divider is. Just so they could run up and down it and get a big shout at them when they come near the wire. Just to slow them down and get them to calm down. Because it's only now that they're starting to put their nose down to grass. They went out full. If they had went out hungry, they would have settled much quicker. But they're quite full as it is at the minute. And they're in more of a playful mood, as you can see there, than anything else. That's the first time the heifers have been out in 2023. Yes! We're going to go back now and we're going to scrape the slats, give the house a bit of a clean up. Um, because when it dries, it makes it much harder. In about a week or so, we'll come over and I'll power wash it. And that'll be that job ticked off the list. But Nicole's coming over here with the tester. I, oh, I have tested here. That one's not on. She's testing the one, the only one that's not on. Is it on? Yeah. What are you getting? Eight thousand. Is it? You getting ten thousand? Yeah. So there's plenty of power there to lose your eyebrows. But as I was saying, we're not going to let them down there because our calves will be getting down there. They won't be getting at all. 
but they'll be getting a wee bit of that down there as well. It's a lovely sheltered spot for calves, right down in a hollow where no wind and stuff can get at them. There's plenty of shelter from the rain and stuff as well. We'll firstly be putting them out up there um, till they train them in and as they get a few days outside we let them down there. We've done that all the years and it's worked out great. We used to have nothing but trouble over where that bog is. It was more of an open spot. We used to have quite a lot of trouble with our calves when they first go out just for the first couple of weeks out there but never in here. So you learn as you go along, you make mistakes, you find better spots to suit and that's farming. When I come back over to the yard, Sophia had it all cleaned which is great. Time for a cup of coffee first. Back over then and we'll get ready to put a few cows out. So we're down here in our bog field as we call it. Um, this is our bog area down here below us. But this is the area we worked here with Jerry last year. We just took out a few humps and things that was in it. And we're coming back into it now and I can see straight away how wet it is. And it's not all wet like this but yeah unworkable at the moment. You could go in there and you could go up to the top of your wellies just in a pure swamp. So not workable just yet. But the further I go over, the wetter it looks. And we're starting to sink here. You can see here, no walkies any further. So, but that won't stop us. We can always pin that area off and leave that till further on in the summertime. But we can go ahead and do the bits we can do. So my idea in here will be, first of all, We've got some drains running out there which aren't helping this situation at all. Running straight down here and that's what's leaving this whole area very, very wet. So what we'll do when Jerry comes back is we'll put uh, some sort of a drain the whole way across there and we'll pipe it straight down to the bog and get all the water that's coming from the, the big hill above. And um, because there's a step down here, there's always going to be naturally water coming in here. And we're going to look at it properly, put a plan in place and Pipe it all to get all the water that's come from that hill straight down and off this into that bog. There'll be a lot of stone to be got, there'll be a lot of pipes to be got, but it'll be worth it in the end. It's only a small area back there, but it doesn't matter if it's a half acre, if it's a quarter of an acre, it doesn't matter what size it is. Every wee bit of ground you can get a bit of grass to grow on is valuable to me anyway, and I would definitely put the time and effort into it because I think it's money well invested when you can get a little bit more grass out of what you have. So the guys have just been up electric fence here and um, we're going to put over three cows here. Three cows that aren't calving for a little while yet because I want to get this grass grazed off. There's no point in tramping it all into the ground when the track machine comes in a few weeks time. So they'll have it at by then. We let them up around the cottage as well. Let them eat all areas that are just rough so then we can get a better look at what we're doing and we're not wasting any grass. Do them the world of good to get out anyway as long as we don't give them too much to eat. Um, especially when they're coming near enough to calve. Um, but it'll save me feeding them in the shed especially when the sheds are so warm now. It is 18 degrees today, which is absolutely lovely. So that's the job in hand. Let's get at it. So that's them in. They'll be lovely and excited for a while. Um, that girl there is not due until about the 20th of May. And this girl here is due on the 15th of May, which isn't that terrible far away. Uh, but a wee bit of grass, it'll not do them any harm. I'll keep an eye on them, obviously in case they get my status. But there's no flies around at this time of year and they'll be doing me a hell of a favor just to graze that wee bit there. So we let them at it, keep a tight eye on them and they should be fine. Our water drinker, there's no water over here. I forgot all about that we hit the pipe, water pipe, when we were working at the cottage and we didn't reconnect it. So I'm going to have to make a temporary connection. That's another job I'm going to have to do today because it is warm and they will want water. It's very important. So I'll have to come back in the quad after lunch. It's just gone one o'clock now. And back in the quad, a bit of piping, a few joiners and fix up the water. What did you say there? Stop with it. A board literally just done that. Literally just there now as it flew by. And nearly got it on top of your head. Mm. And you were talking about John Deere's in the middle of it, weren't you? No. When that happened. No. So, um, yeah, probably was aimed correctly. I have my spectator with me today. Mum just after dropping her over here to me because she must have been getting on the mum's hair, were you? Yeah. 
yeah so so i have her for a wee while now here's the water now this is temporary that water there is going over to them drinkers where the three cows is we just put out um and there's a wee trench here that jerry left i'm surprised it hasn't all sank in i know let's get this done phil mac joiner here should be fine just to slide it into it lighten it up like that It's unreal the way fittings are so handy. I remember when we used to use the brass ones, which I still use a lot. When we had a bust in my mother and father's house back there a couple of months ago, or even less, and we couldn't get any fittings to fit it. Um, it was only a local lad um, who holds on to a lot of that old English um, fittings. Only for that we would have been in a bit of bother because we would have had a replaced pipe in the kitchen and everything to make it work. A lot of this farm was done in that style of piping and, and we could never get the brass polys to fit. They are always very loose and they are always coming apart. But now you have these kind of joiners now and, and they're supposed to last a lot longer than the brass ones. The brass ones seem to be deteriorating badly now this last while. I don't know if that's true or not, but certainly are an awful lot easier to do. That just took me literally minutes and we're up and running again. Well, my list of jobs are getting bigger as I go along. At this rate, I'll not be home till midnight. But do you remember here, and these are our key night. We used to have our last bath drinker here. Um, I never liked the bath drinkers. They were all right years ago. But you get a lot of stuff that gets into them and has a bath in them. And then the cattle come along and drink out of them. So this is an 80 gallon drinker. I had it sitting over here. Um, it used to be behind the cottage. So if you remember when we were first taking the fence off around it, there was a drinker at the back of it. Well, that's it here. Took the bath drinker away last year and I just cut the pipe and left it in the ground and I didn't realise then that I hadn't this one already connected so when I turn on the water over there it'd be nice and plentiful coming out here and down into the bog so instead of putting a blind cap on it I just hooked up that drinker you look there it's only a plastic connection just like the rest as simple as could be so it's hooked up now it's not put in any way lovely or anything but it is sort of level and it will do for now it'll keep the water from pouring or leaking away and we can go over here now and get it connected up and turned on so we're down here at the connection point i was just trying to remember what way i left it well this is our pipe here now so coming in here from the mains up out of the ground we have our stopper here at the moment's turned on i'm going to turn the water off uh, that comes up here to a t-joiner which is drifting water the whole way up to our slatted house which is way up there on the top and this was the part here that was going on straight and going around the back of the cottage and supplying water to the other part over down the bog and up along uh, the far side of the big hill and thankfully i just put a blank connector on that this is our pipe coming in from them drinkers so let's get tearing into that there we are so that there is just backward pressure coming from the drinkers up above because the water is off now we'll take this poly off and reuse it there we go put right back in there Back on. Uh, what we like for Lent here. There we are. Boom. Hopefully, no leaks. Oh, we're good there, anyway. Now, before you ask, um, we are upgrading all that pipe. All that pipe's going to be changed, so I'm not too worried about the way it is now. It's safe as houses and it's relatively good but we are going to upgrade all of that and another thing about it is we're probably going to put a new meter in in front of this house maybe two meters one for the house one for the farm that's all coming up down the line and we will put new pipes through most of this farm just a larger pipe and get more water from our meter no leaks there so the only thing i have to check now is our drinkers and turn it off here sees it leaking trickling away there at the minute now the reason that's so slack is that the other drinkers are all filling at the minute the only way i'll know if they're leaking or not is to come back over here later on i'll check them then when they're all full and the water's all pressurized and i'll know what the story is then so it's actually a week later now and i'm back over here just checking on the cows here after milking the three cows they're doing 100 percent down there i'm after giving them another little small bit of grass because they're like hoovers they ate it in no time we had a great week because the day after we put these cows out we put our calves out and we got most of our January and mid-February calves all outside, which took the weight of my shoulders. This week was just a, such a, 
a better week for me and the weather behaved itself up until yesterday and then we had about a week's rain in the last 24 hours and everything even where I'm standing the water is just running on the top of the ground everywhere is absolutely soaked back to square one again the cows are making a hell of a mess this evening was unbelievable trying to milk them because their quarters now are covered in clay it's just not going to talk about any more raw going through it but yeah it's just a bad bad start to a year but anyway before we end today's video we're standing oh why and look what my transport is today i'm going everywhere on the wee honda it's such a super wee thing for flying around I'm trying to run it in. That's what I'm at at the minute. I'm trying to get the brakes to bed in. The back brakes are almost there. They're not just quite there yet. But I'm giving them a lot of use, a lot of hard use. And then tightening them little by little so that the seat in. But otherwise, it's running like a dream. But the big renovation is sitting behind it. And I know a lot of you, a hell of a lot of you, are questioning me about what's going to happen or what's happening. Well, I'm going to finish off really fast and give you a little bit of an update. This coming week we hope to have an architect looking at it. We are talking to a couple of different architects just to find one that's suitable just for this kind of a renovation job. I have a kind of an idea in my head of what we'd like to do with it. But we are going to renovate it. We are definitely going to renovate it. So we're going to have to get plans first of all throughout that are acceptable, what we can do with it. And then we can start getting prices and start moving forward from there. There's a lot of planning. As we all know, there's a lot of paperwork in these kind of jobs. But when we get all that done, in the next few months hopefully we'll be fit to start something on it but my idea is as always is to keep it as a traditional style irish cottage but with all the modern mod cons at the same time we're not talking about in the immediate future making it a huge amount bigger but there are things that it has to have to live in it so we will be doing them of course but when we get the kind of plans all throughout and in place i will do a walk around and kind of give you an update of what we're planning on doing and we, of course that outhouse in the side we need to pull off all that ivy we need to just clean the place up a little bit and maybe put the doors on the side because the work won't be starting immediately and we do need to protect what's already there we are making progress on it now i just did nothing to it in the winter time and nothing to it this spring because of well been busy with cows calving and then a really bad spring weather wise left no time to even look at it so i haven't even stood inside it since i put the sheeting on the windows so that gives you an idea it's just been too busy jerry's going to be here actually hopefully when the weather picks up i have him already booked i actually rung him yesterday and he'll be here and he'll be digging out the whole back of it putting in some sort of a street here that you can get in with a vehicle and park if you're doing any work you need to be fit to get in because there's no way you can park out there there's no room to park so we have to make an access up here where we can park our vehicles and if any construction work is to take place here they need to be able to come in as well and be fit to park up so this whole area here will have to be gravelled and right around the back of it will have to be gravelled and we'll have to just fence off the site whatever big it's going to be we're going to fence off the site just make the whole thing secure and easy accessible but anyway that's for another day thanks very much for watching guys we'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.